Well, thank you very much for the presentation today. We really enjoyed it. Very insightful. Uh, can you just tell us your name, the, your title, uh, the organization you're with, and the topic that you discussed today? Sure. I'm, um, my name is Peter Haas. I'm the Chief Research Scientist at the Center for Neighborhood Technology. Um, we're a 40-year-old not-for-profit in Chicago uh, working on uh, making urban life more sustainable. And I was talking about, among other things, uh, transit-oriented development and, and in particular, equitable transit-oriented uh, development. How we can make sure that um, development happens around transit assets, but, um, but more importantly, fairly. Wonderful. Well, you talked briefly about your uh, lecture. Can, can you uh, expand on that and maybe give us a few of the key takeaways you really mm -hmm. want the class or others watching this video to understand? Yeah, I think there's a couple things that lead up to what makes a, a transit, uh, why transit-oriented development is, is sustainable. Um, first of all, housing costs are, are, are high and need to be affordable, but more than that, housing and transportation together, when you look at that as an affordability um, criteria, it, you can really start to understand why it's valuable to live in a compact urban neighborhood, and I think that's one of the big takeaways I like to to, to, to give students. And then the other thing is, is that um, this happens in, uh, in Chicago and, in, and there's been ordinances that have allowed for um, affordable housing to be built um, more compact, um, bigger, less parking. Um, and that's been happening all up and down the city. But has that been happening in the lower income and, um, and minority neighborhoods as much as in the white upper neighborhoods? Uh, the more white and the, and the higher income neighborhoods, and to, we need to do. We need to expose people to the ideas of making sure that that happens fairly. I guess those would be the big takeaways. Perfect. Thank you very much. Among other things, you talked about um, ETODs and the H and T affordability index today. Uh, could you talk about how those could be applied here on UIC's campus? Ah, very good. Uh, yeah, so the h and is what I was just talking about, the Transportation and Housing, h and uh, have to both together look affordable. And so what we found is that uh, transportation costs tend to be more affordable in compact urban neighborhoods where there's assets, where there's um, commerce happening, where you can catch a bus to get downtown, where you can walk to a restaurant or a coffee shop, you don't have to get in a car to go to one. And so this neighborhood is ripe for that kind of development. So maybe one of the one of the suggestions that could be to make this uh, location more efficient is to have more affordable housing uh, in, in and around the neighborhood. Maybe not owned by the university, but um, but but available. So that would be one um, aspect. And I think um, um, inter in integrating um, transit and mobility options on campus, which I think happens at some level, um, is good. And limiting the parking. Um, if you don't have parking, people will find other ways to get here. It's not that they won't come, but they'll they'll figure it out, and it won't be so um, uh, what do I want to say dependent, auto dependent <laughs> in getting to school. So I, those are my three ideas, I guess. That's three. Those are those are great ideas. We'll definitely uh, look at look into those a little further at the great. university here. Now for a couple of more fun questions for you. <laughs> um, what do you think are some of the most exciting things happening in mobility and transportation right now? Maybe pick one or one or two things that you just think is really exciting. Mm -hmm. And that could be whether it be, that could be something that's happening, say, here in Chicago specifically, or if you prefer to give us more of a worldwide perspective, that's fine as well. Well, if I was to think of one thing, and I'm, it's exciting, but I'm not sure it's a good thing, <laughs> is autonomous vehicles. And the idea that we're gonna be able to build um, uh, vehicles that can run on their own. So I, I have some issues with them. I think that they there's a niche that they can fulfill that will enhance a little ability. So if we think about autonomous vehicles as personal vehicles, I think that that's not where we need to go. Because you all it does is take the pain out of driving, so people are gonna drive more. But if we could use autonomous vehicles for transit, um, that would cut transit agencies' labor costs down. You could think of running higher frequency bus routes um, on, on city streets um, and it, would, it, it might be more affordable and, 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 and uh, well, cheaper to run. Um, so I think that's, that's there's, a, there's two sides to that coin, the autonomous vehicle. I think um, if all we do is build um, cool little cars that drive themselves, 
I don't think that's where we need to go, but if we can actually use it to enhance um, uh, transit systems, I think that's, uh, that's going to be more beneficial for, for society at large. Those are really good insights, and I just want to expand on that just a slight bit. Uh -huh. um, one of the thi one of the things that I, I'm hearing from you is that we need to have proper planning. We need to be thinking about this. Maybe we need to be bringing some of the right stakeholders to the table to start to um, put some proper guidance in place so that we we optimize these outcomes. We have the best outcomes that, that we can from this new technology. Are there any thoughts on that? Maybe maybe some of the key stakeholders that you think should be in the room talking mm -hmm. right now, and how do we shape the policies to ensure that we um, um, move towards better, the best outcomes that we can. Yeah. Within reason. Yeah, well, those are really good questions. Um, I think that the, um, you know, what, what you said about planning, I, th these things need planning. And, and Americans, for some reason, don't like to do a lot of planning. There's, in fact, an organization called uh, No Planning, right? Um, dot org. Um, but um, I, I think that we have to look at um, not only planners, planning, planners doing planning, but also citizens and they need to engage the community. I think it's really important um, when we look at, well, if we were to, to use the example of maybe you build more housing in this neighborhood, you're going to get some pushback from some people in the community that say, oh, well, that's going to be crazy. There's going to be way too much parking. But, you, but, but if you advocate it with a lot of, or, or people could advocate for what they really need in this community, um, you would probably hear a slightly different story than just the loud people that come to the library on Saturday at the Alderman's office. But if you can engage more people in the community to, to say what they need and want, I think you get a better outcome, a more sustainable outcome, and one that can uh, just uh, be more beneficial for everybody. So uh, planning is important, engaging citizens in that, in that planning, and really reaching out and getting uh, participation in that process, I think, is a key to this. Wonderful. So one last question. Okay. Uh, you talked a lot about uh, infrastructure and, and um, kind of the housing side of this. Mm. But when you think about your trans your favorite transportation option, uh -huh. what would that be? And okay. Why? Huh. <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, so I drive an electric vehicle. So I mean, the electric uh, infrastructure I think is key. I kind of wonder about how many kiosks of chargers do we need out there. I don't think they really work. At least personally, they don't work for me. I charge in my garage. I go, I go places. When I go to Walgreens and there's a charger there, it's going to probably charge me more than I would pay for gas. So I think that there's a little bit of an over um, zealous <laughs> um, advocacy for getting the electrical infrastructure out there. I think that the electric, and I might be wrong, I'm not sure if I, I know uh, all the ins and outs of this, but uh, it seems like. We're ready for electrification of vehicles. Um, maybe ComEd needs to up some of their uh, supply side um, things. So if I was talking about personal vehicles, that would be what, I would, what I'm most thinking about is, is the electrification of the, of the vehicle, um, of personal vehicles. But my favorite of mode of transport station is, um, well, I don't know. I like to bike, <laughs> but um, I mean, these days, uh, riding the L is the way I get to and from work and do a lot of other things. So, I mean, I think uh, rapid transit uh, uh, is, 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 is great. <laughs> I mean, it gets you to where you want to go. It's overcrowded these days. I think that we need to expand and um, increase service provided. Um, and I think that that's all a matter of, of implementing better infrastructure. We need to rebuild some of the systems that run there. I'm told that the electrical uh, infrastructure that supplies power to the L is not robust enough to run more trains so they can't um, solve some of the overcrowding problems. So I think there's a lot of more investment to put into infrastructure, uh, transport to transit infrastructure. As a little side point, <laughs> I think that, you know, we could, we could learn from the highway builders, right? The highway builders built another lane and then it gets crowded and there's congestion and it doesn't work anymore, right? And then they build another lane and then everybody's happy for a day or two and then it gets congested and it doesn't work anymore. Why don't we do that with transit? Why don't we like say, okay, no one's riding transit, so let's put more transit out there. Then people are gonna ride it. It's gonna get crowded, then we'll put more. more. And let's quit building the lanes. Let's put more buses and trains out there. Just a, a thought. <laughs> Great point. I think that's uh, very true. If you, the, the, the more you support it, the more it'll grow. I mean, you can't, 
you can't get a seat on the food line anytime within an hour or two of rush hour. So you're right, I think if you build more, more people will take it. And as more people take it, it'll only um, free up our, our, our streets, so <laughs> there's not quite so much of right. so. It advantages the people that are committed to driving the cars to have better transit and get okay. people off the streets. Very true. Well, thank you very much. We sure. really appreciate it. Okay, thanks.